Hello, everybody. Okay. I think it's going to stay live. <laughs> I'm going to... There was my notification. Will that come back? It sure will. I'm going to grab... Okay. It looks good. All right. Hi, Debbie. Linda. How are you guys? Welcome. It is so good to be here today, Monday morning. I'm a little early. I usually go live around 11 a.m. and I'm a little bit early. Hey, mom. Uh, it looks like Facebook is doing all of its notifications. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this onto YouTube directly. Well, not directly after I'm done, but today. So I am planning on writing a blog post and doing a YouTube video today with this. So if you're watching on YouTube, um, make sure you do all of the YouTube -y things, subscribe, um, hit the bell. I noticed, I don't know if this is happening to anybody else, but I noticed that some of my, um, I'm a huge YouTube consumer. I love watching YouTube and it's often what I do before I go to bed. I will scroll through and watch uh, my favorite YouTube people. And I noticed I wasn't like their videos weren't coming up in my feed. And I noticed that when I went and I clicked the bell and I clicked all like I want to see all of their videos their videos started coming up in my feed so if you're on YouTube and you're not seeing my videos or you want to make sure they're in your feed click that bell I never really have talked about that because I really didn't think it was necessarily it was necessary but apparently it is so click the bell so that you will see when I have a video there will be chapters on the bottom for you to go through this if you don't want to hang out with all the chit chat um, it's going to be a fairly long video because as you can see, I have lots of designer paper out here and we're going to make four cards and I want to share with you guys how to make, take one card design and do it in different ways so you can maximize your create, like the time that you're creating. Um, hey, Missy, so glad um, that you caught me here live. I've been thinking about you because I have felt like I haven't seen you pop up recently. And then um, I don't know if you saw over the weekend, I did a little video in our documenting group. So if you missed that, make sure you um, make sure that you check that out. And then my mom said, good morning. Julie said, hope um, all is so a small update. Um, the fire, the wind shifted. So I think it was Thursday night was the really critical night. Um, if the wind would not have shifted, I am positive our town would have burned. Like I am positive with the, with how fast the fire moved. And now it's moving in the opposite direction as us, which is very like mountain kind of terrain. And so, um, they they're hot that's still under zero containment they've still zero containment for this fire that broke out um but it's in very like mountain type settings and so it's making it hard um it is much flatter this way so if the wind had not shifted and blown the fire the other direction um i am positive our county would have burned to a crisp um I'm thankful that the wind shifted and that the way it has shifted, there are not many structures or homes in it. There are some, but there's not as many as if it had continued to shift this way. It did over the weekend jump the freeway. And so now there it is a little more critical because the spots where it jumped the highway, there are some structures. We actually had... Um, all weekend, we had blue sky. We did not have any smoke. We did not, it did not smell like fire out there because the wind was significantly blowing it the other way. I think my mom is experiencing some of the smoke from it. Um, but we are incredibly grateful. I saw outside um, last night. It was really cool. It was like in the 70s. And I just saw out there and we watered the grass and I just felt so grateful that um the fire did shift i think that um most of the people from our community are doing okay and um 
We have some really amazing uh, air support that is trying to get this fire under containment. The wind has blown a little bit of the fire back, uh, so the smoke and stuff back this way. We smell the fire again and there's smoke today. But it was a struggle last week, you guys, between the fire and it being, it was just very scary that one night they said if it does not shift, it, there's going to be a lot of problems. And so that night was very scary. And then we had a little incident with the elementary school where they said Andrew's class was exposed to COVID. And then so we had to kind of very quickly decide what to do with Andrew, whether we would keep him home, whether we would have COVID testing done on him, just all of the things of what we would do when we decided to keep him home and just keep him away from all of the things. And then the very next day, we got an email saying, oops, we were wrong. There was no COVID. Everybody can come back. So last week was hard. It was just a lot of different things that we were trying to deal with and figure out. So I thank you guys for understanding. Um, on Friday, I just like shut everything down and I was like, I need a couple days. I decorated for fall and changed my house around. I did some memory keeping and posted some stuff in my memory keeping group. But I really like I didn't even film videos or anything. And it was really, really um, needed. And so thank you guys so much for your emails and your thoughts and your I've seen the comments and I am back in here today and it feels good to have had that little bit of a break and um, and we're back to it. So that's the update on the fire and all the stuff that happened last week. Um, it is a little bit better here right now and we're praying that they get the fire under containment. Missy said, who do you watch on YouTube? Um, it depends on what mood I'm in. Um, this weekend I spent a lot of time watching Allie Edwards and catching up on my class content from her because I was doing memory keeping. Um, I love watching Christina Warner when I'm doing, when I'm making cards. I actually don't watch any Stampin' Up! demonstrators. Um, kind of very, uh, it's very intentional on my part. Um, I like to see their, their stuff. I mean, I, I follow, when I do go on Pinterest, I follow a lot of demonstrators and I see what they're doing, but I feel like I don't want to be, um, influenced by the way that they do videos. Um, most Stampin' Up! demonstrators that are doing videos are, um, like, how do you say this kindly? This is no judgment, but they're there to sell, right? They're there to get you to purchase. And it's like, I don't want that commentary. Like, I don't want to hear it because I don't, I think we pick up on some of that. I don't want to feel like, oh, I should be doing it more. Or I should be selling more, asking people to buy more. Or like, I just think that sometimes there can be an agenda and I don't want to hear it. I that I don't mean that negatively. I just mean that's why I choose not to watch other Stampin' Up! demonstrators. Um, but I watch like Christina Warner. Sometimes I'll check out Jennifer McGuire. Her videos are a little long-winded for me um, and a little too fancy, you know, for me. I really am enjoying Christina Warner's um, reaction videos to her older card videos. And I was thinking it would be fun to like do a um, case Christina and like pick one of her cards. And the, if you don't know who Christina Warner is, just Google her. I mean, she's like one of the biggest card making people on YouTube. And I was thinking it would be fun to be like, do like case Christina and pick a card and like case what she did and do it like maybe like put a spin on it. Um, but so I just, uh, it just really depends. And yeah, my mom said she's Andrew's favorite. We always catch up on Christina Warner videos, um, like on Thursday nights and Friday nights. We watch her past the past week videos and he loves her. And she actually made him a card. Um, if you go back on her video, um, she did some mail art and did a envelope and a card to him. And it was pretty spectacular. Um, uh, Julie said, you keep it your way. I'm assuming that means from the not <laughs> watching other Stampin' Up! demonstrators. Um, Dawn's here. Hello, Dawn. Um, yeah, I think that would be fun. And it's no, um, I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean, I really try to, um, 
I don't want a narrative of, um, I don't, I don't necessarily believe the way all Stampin' Up! demonstrators believe. So I just, I don't want to hear the narrative. I want to make sure that I'm, you know, keeping my, keeping what, doing what I want to do with this and not feeling inadequate, I guess. So I just took, um, basic white and, um, I cut it at four and a quarter. I cut two at a time so I can have four card bases because that's what we're going to do. We're going to make four cards and it's going to be one design and I'm going to show you how to do it where you can put a little bit of a spin on it or make it a little bit different. If you're mass producing cards, this, it would be an easy one to do. So I am just going to give these a good crease. Just like that. Okay, so I have my card basis. Now the other things I have here is I have a sentiment set because you're going to need a sentiment set. We're not doing any stamping of images because we're going to use the designer paper to be our focal point. So you need something that has sentiments. I love this one. It says inspired. Oh, I thought I said inspired Christmas. This is inspired thoughts and it has um, a Christmas sentiment and then it has like all of your other ones. Congratulations. Thanks so much. There's this hello, peace, joy, and love. I mean, I guess that could be for the holidays, but it could be for other things too. Sympathy. Um, this says it's your time to be remembered, to feel appreciated, and to know you're celebrated, thinking of you on your special day. So there's lots of different ones here that are going to be great for um, any, any of the cards we do. I pulled out some black ribbon. Um, the paper I'm using, I felt like black, either black or white ribbon would, I could do with all of them. And then I have a two inch punch. You could use your stitched circle dies if you wanted. I wanted something that was going to be quick. I could just punch. Um, I might need my bigger one. I have a two and a half inch. The other thing is, is I have my little container of white die cuts. So I don't know if I'm going to use these. I might use the, need these smaller ones. Really? I'm going to, for this sentiment, but that's what I have. So it's very minimal supplies. You could do this, um, really with not very much. Um, <laughs> Julie said, I'm lucky to get one done. No mass producing here. Also, if you're feeling like, uh, like your creative mojo, like is a little bit like you're lacking, like you're like, oh, I really want to be creative, but I'm not really feeling it. Something like this can be very helpful where you just have very minimal supplies and you're using the paper and it's like basically the same design. Um, but you are able to get something done. Okay. So we're going to do this one last. So we're going to work on these three. These three are celebration paper. So you can get this paper for free when you place a $50 order. So a couple things that are coming up here in the near future. Um, one, I am very close to earning the incentive trip and this month and next month are my last chances to do that. So you're going to hear me talking about that. And um, with that, I'm also going to be doing a world card making day event and that is going to have a um, Christmas stamp a stack box that is going to um, I believe I'm going to start talking about that this Thursday when you purchase the box there will be 12 different projects that you get to make and it will be a day event for world card making day and it is also my um, it is, it's my push to earn the incentive trip. Um, I will not be traveling for the incentive trip, but I will, there is a significant bonus that I receive when I get that, when I earn that. So that is what would be helpful for me and my business next year. Um, I, 
so I'm looking forward to that and looking forward to this last little push and I will be doing that, but it will be featuring all Christmas paper and celebration items and celebrations happens this month and next month. And so you can get any of these papers here that we're using, you can get for free when you place a $50 order, you just pick these. So what I want to do with these papers is I want to um, pick one that has a design that I can punch out. So I'm going to punch out the image of one, and this one's going to be perfect. And then I'm going to pick two other designs, and you're going to need to do this for each of your pattern papers. So I want the dots or the snowflakes. The snowflakes would be good. Um, this would be good. I really wanted a red one, but, oh, here's this one. What about this one and this one? Okay, so let's do that one. So that, and then this one, because we'll need an image, okay? So that's going to be card one. Here, we're going to pick... Some designs. So first I'm going to pick the design that's going to be my focal point. And I think it's going to be this one because maybe let's do some coloring. So we'll do that one and then we will do this one. Hmm. These I feel like are too light, like the white part of it, but I need two designs. So I guess this is what we're going to go with. We'll make it work. Okay, so the next, let's pick our penguin one, and then our blackberry one we'll pick at the end. We'll do that at the end. So I'm going to need one of these little penguins, so we will set that aside. And then I'm going to need a couple designs. So let's look in here. I feel like this design and maybe this striped design. Is that too much just jade? I don't think so. Okay. So now what we're going to do... Okay, so we have our three sets... Again, you can do this with any paper you want. Okay, I need to be able to show you my trimmer. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put these two pieces together. So just make sure they're lined up, okay? Now we're gonna cut these at four and a quarter by five and a half. That's the whole front of the card base. Okay, so here's set one, and let's do this again. So we just line them up, and we're going to cut four and a quarter again by five and a half. Just make sure they're lined up. If you feel more comfortable cutting each one separate, you can do that. It's no problem. Set that aside, and then let's do our black and our white one again. Four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, so now we're going to take both of them together, and you could actually get uh, two cards out of each of these designs. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to line them up. So I just line this corner up with the, with the, what am I trying to say? With this groove where you're going to cut, I line that up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that over and it doesn't, this doesn't have to be accurate. It's really however you want it to be. 
So now we have some pieces. Okay, so then I'll set that with my design. So then let's do these. And I'm gonna do these kind of all different. So I did that one sort of up at the top. So now I'm gonna do this one right corner to corner. Or maybe like this, let's just twist it a little. Okay, so now we have that. I think that's sort of almost the same. And then let's do this one and let's do this one corner to corner. Let's just see how that works, like so. Okay, so we're done with the trimmer. Now let's bring our punch over. We're gonna prep all of these pieces before we start. So I want, can I, will this guy punch out good? I think I need my bigger, my bigger circle punch. This is my two and a half inch. So I will definitely, well, I'm gonna have to punch through this guy. Okay. So let's, oh yeah, that's better. Oh, but it, I'm gonna get his little arm in there. Well, let's just see how it looks. I mean, we might be able to cover it up. We might have to pick a different image. Okay, then I think my smaller punch, this would fit in. Mm, no, it doesn't. Okay. All right, all right, I'll use the bigger punch. Okay, so we have that piece. And then for this one, we want this image here. Okay. So we got all of our pieces. Okay. Everybody's still with me? Okay. Now let's start putting these together. So let's start with the penguin because he's the cutest. We're gonna grab our card bases and this is what we're gonna do. Okay, so you're gonna pick your design and we're gonna put these together. Where did my, okay. Like so. Now, where is, here it is. Here's our penguin. So we're going to place that there. Now, if you want, you could add ribbon. I feel like I might want to. And I think that the black goes really nice. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use liquid glue because it's going to give me a little bit of wiggle room when I'm placing this on here. And who thinks that these cards might need a little sequence? So let's just place these down. See how that gives you a tiny bit of wiggle room to line it up? And then the nice thing, you could also cut these um, slightly smaller, like take a quarter inch off and then add a, another colored piece of cardstock, like as a mat and pop it up. I just think these are super cute like this, even without the ribbon, this would look so cute, right? But I think that the ribbon just adds a little bit of um, contrast. And I'm just gonna um, add, am I, am I gonna add? Mm, you know what, I think I'm gonna have to add liquid glue to this. So let's cut it a little bit longer. And then let's put the glue right on here. I always
always feel like I need to cover the seams when I'm doing a card. Oops, I'm a little high there. There we go. So I'm just going to leave that sitting there like that because I want that to adhere. And then let's add a little bit of foam to this circle and pop up the penguin. Okay. And we're going to put all of them together. So we're going to do all the same steps and then like we'll do the stamping of the sentiment all together so this guy is going to go right here right and we'll set that aside so the glue can dry okay so now let's do the next one so the next one is going to be this one we'll take our card base and the thing that we want to make sure is we have our bottom piece and then this is our top piece. Oh, uh, what happened here? What is going on? Oh, I think it's just a little bit. Okay, I'll show you how to fix that. Okay, so let's add this. Linda, you feel that way about the seams? I don't know what it is. It's like, I feel like I need another piece of paper or I need like ribbon is usually my go-to to cover those seams up, but I don't know what it is. Like, I just don't like seeing them, I guess. Okay, so we have that piece and then we have this piece. And we're going to line this up and then to this edge here. And I know you see that little bit of white, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. We're just going to take our paper trimmer, just our mini one. And I feel like I need to chomp off a little bit more. And then also maybe even from the bottom. And then we have this guy here, but let's add our ribbon. So particularly, I think this one's really pretty with this ribbon. I don't know about you guys, but... And this ribbon is not current ribbon, but you might still have it in your stash. It's the scalloped edge ribbon. I think it was in the holiday catalog last year, and it just has this really pretty scalloped edge on it. Oh, that would look good too, mom. So I picked, when I picked my ribbon, my mom said that silver would look good and it would. When I picked the ribbon, I wanted to pick one ribbon that I felt like would go with all of it. Probably gold, white, black, or silver would go with all of these. So let's add. So you're not doing any, you could... Um, but you're not doing any stamping for any of the images. Like you're just using the actual designer paper, which that kind of makes it nice uh, from a minimal supply supplies. Um, I wanted to show you guys, if you got a pack of paper for free, what could you really do with just the paper? And this, am I up again? It's like my new setup. I keep feeling like I need to be way up here and I don't. Okay, so let's add that there. And remember, we're letting the ribbon dry. So our next pieces, we have these. So we're going to do a little bit of coloring. And this one, I think I cut even more at an angle. So let's add these and then let's color these for like a fall, like fall colors. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have said that because I don't really know. You know me, I'm not all that great with the coloring. So maybe that wasn't a good color combo to think of 
or maybe too broad. We'll figure it out. I think I'm gonna use my blends. Again, this is just slightly Let's just, I can just do this edge. Okay. So now let's color. And I'm going to put a piece of scrap paper down because let's use, um, let's use, is this just jade? Oh, not just jade. Let's do soft succulent. Hmm. These don't have, yeah, so, nope, these are just jade. What in the world, what's this? Oh, that's shaded spruce. Okay, let's use these. And then let's do, um, I guess maybe yellow? Is this daffodil? Mm, I don't know. What do you guys think of this color combo? Okay, let's just do like simple, simple coloring. So we're going to take the dark blend. And I always like the brush tip better. And I'm just going to flick up some of the darker color into the center here. Maybe I should pick three colors. What other color would go with this color combo? Okay, so here's the dark, maybe orange. Uh, and then, so this one is like sort of not, okay. Maybe orange, do you guys think? Uh, pumpkin pie? I don't know, I'm not great at the color combos. Let's try this. Okay, so this is dark pumpkin pie. And wherever those lines are, and then sort of just in the center is where I'm bringing the color. Okay, so then let's go with in with the light. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna come up where that dark already is. And I've said, I like using blends, just these are alcohol markers. So the finish that you get compared to regular markers is just different. And for somebody who does not like coloring, I think it's tedious and I don't love it. The finish that you get with alcohol markers is much different than with other coloring mediums. And so I feel like it hides a lot of my flaws with the coloring. And like with this, you're not getting a, a huge difference. It's on, um, you know, designer paper. So it's not the best for blending, but it will give you a little bit of a different look. Hopefully you can see that. I'll bring it up closer in just a second. So then let's go in with our lights. Ooh, this tip is mangled. I'm gonna have to use the other tip, which I don't really like. So I'm gonna go in, this is, I think it's picking up a little bit of the black from the designer paper. I might have to go in with my dark, yeah. Let's just go in with the dark and add a little bit of, and it's also because it's going to bleed, it's going to pick up the color from the, the, the back. So with, especially with this light yellow, that's definitely going to happen. So now let's go in with our light pumpkin pie. Ooh, that tip's mangled too. And I'm just doing the same. I'm coming up where it's darker. This is going to be a little bit harder to blend. But again, it doesn't, I'm not even looking for it to be perfect. To be quite honest, like, 
And I'm gonna go back over it. And it, I mean, I'm moder I, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. So like, it's not horrible. And the color combo is not terrible either. So then let's add our ribbon. And I'm just adding that. It doesn't even have to be a perfect line. And then we'll cut some ribbon off here. And I've made all the scallops face up. I think the ribbon is really beautiful on this paper particularly. Okay, so then now let's add our foam. And then we'll just add this right on top. Okay, so now let's go back and trim our ribbon. And I don't know if you guys can hear that the guy next door is running a, I don't know, some power tool. He's working, um, the house next door to us sold and they're doing a bunch of work on it. And he's out there today running a drill of some type. Okay, so now we I think I can trim this one too. I'm going to wait on that other one we just did to make sure it dries. And then I'm using my ribbon scissors to trim that ribbon. Okay, so now let's work on our sentiment. So for this one... I really want to use this piece, love and joy. And I would really like to cover this arm up. So I'm thinking that I might use this circle and do it right here on the edge for the sentiment. Because I think peace, love and joy will work. And then I'm also gonna stamp all of the sentiments in black. And I feel like that's gonna also allow me to not only like if I'm mass producing do something quicker but then also it's it's very minimal supplies so peace love and joy and then what we want to do is add a thin piece of foam on the one side let me see, probably on this side. And then a little bit of glue, cause we're gonna overlap. And then that's gonna get rid of the little polar bear's arm. So it's not gonna be on there. And then it's popped up, okay? I smeared a tiny bit. So let's set that one aside. Now for this one, I feel like this could be a good, uh, I could do it down here. I feel like I wanted to do it like across. So I have one of these, but I feel like maybe that's too big. I could do another circle, but I feel like... That might not look good. <laughs> I could just do a strip. Or we could do it down here. I wonder if... Okay, I'm going to have to clean these later. Chris, if you're watching, I'll clean them later, I promise. Let's just do hello. So this sticker is on wrong. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just a test stamp, okay? Oh good, you guys can't hear him. So I'm just gonna do a test stamp. And I actually got that pretty straight. The sticker is on wrong, it's at an angle. So the way I always tell you guys to, to line up your stamp is to line it up right here with the actual stamp part. Like, don't look at the sticker, because my sticker is on crooked. So when you line this up, you're going to take 
whatever paper you're using or whatever project you're stamping on, and you're gonna see if it if this part of the stamp lines up. And you wanna double check to make sure that the stamp on the back is even. So sometimes it can happen where whatever, um, it's an actual um, press, like a die that creates these stamps. And several years ago, I was lucky enough to go to Canab where Stampin' Up! makes our stamps. And I actually saw the process of how these are made and it's so cool. And so most of the time, your raised image is going to be straight on your red rubber. Okay, so most of the time. So you just want to double check that. And if that's the case, like this one, it's perfectly straight. So now when I stamp, I'm just going to line up the actual red rubber piece. And that's how I'm going to get a straight... Um, stamp. So this stamped pretty straight right off the bat. I'm not too terribly worried about it. But now what I'm going to do is make sure that this is lined up with the bottom of my paper. And it's on my grid mat, so it should be easier. And that looks straight. And it's not bad, right? Now the word hello looks weird to me because I've been looking at it for so long. Um, but other than that, pretty straight. So I can use either one. I'm just going to use the one I just did because I didn't press as hard. So I feel like um, the lines, see this line on the H is a little blown out. So I tried to make sure to not press as hard. So I'm going to cut this. And I could totally set it on here. I could do it on here. I left it a little bit wide because I want to just make it at an angle. And then I think I will just come right over him. So let's put a little bit of foam on the back of the sentiment as well. And I think I can do that. I need my other scissors. By doing that and then cutting it. I could have used a dimensional. That probably would have been easier. So let's do it right over. I don't know. I think this is probably my least favorite card with that sentiment. Okay, so now let's trim the ribbon here and here. This ribbon was easy to trim, that those angles were easy. And then I think I want this right here That's going to cover up a lot. I have this tiny one. Let me get this really tiny one. Okay, so let's use this. Okay, so we need a tiny sentiment. And I think I'll just use this hello again. So then let's... Stamp that and let's do the same thing. We'll just add a little bit of foam to that and pop that right up. Okay, this one I sort of like. I smeared the black. This one's probably my favorite and I don't even like this designer paper. See how that worked out? Hey, Iona. Hi, Kathy. I sort of like that. I feel like I put it on crooked. Okay, so now let's add a few embellishments. And then if you guys want, I'll make one more with the other paper. So now for embellishments, let's see what we can add. I feel like sequence should be the thing that I add. 
but maybe I should just do rhinestones. Maybe just right. What other what other embellishments do I have? Let's look in the embellishment container. Um, let's use these. We'll get some gold on there for my mom. So on this one, we'll just use these gold ones. These are the wonderful gems. And you're not going to be able to totally see a ton. I think it does kind of get lost, but... But I think they're there. And also to spruce it up, let's use our Winka Stella. And add that. You'll probably be able to see that. I actually really like this one, you guys. <laughs> That's so funny. I actually really like this one. Okay, so then the penguin. And I think for the penguin, let's add these gold ones. And this certainly reminds me of Kayla. She loves penguins, though she's outgrowing it a little bit. I'm I'm a little sad. She's not as into them as she once was. Okay, and then of course, let's add some Winkastella. And again, you don't have to add Winkastella. It's fun. Okay, so there's that one. And then now this one, let's add these red ones and let's do something a little different. This is definitely not something that I normally do. You guys know I'm pretty. Uh, I do it pretty much the same every time with my embellishments, but let's just, for fun, do something a little different. And I'm not going to go all the way around the circle. I'm just going to do a set of three and three different places. And I don't know, I, it's not it's not terrible, um, but it's my least favorite. So here's these three. Okay, so now the question is, is should I go ahead and do one with this paper here? I haven't used this paper. This paper is going to be featured a ton next month. A lot of my projects are going to be made out of this um, because I love it. Um, but I could totally do one more card like this and we could see how it turns out if you guys are still with me. And then let me know in the comments below um, which one is your favorite. And in on YouTube, um, in the comments below, let me know which one is your favorite. Should I go ahead and do one more with that paper? Let's see what I have. Oh, maybe I totally should. This would be beautiful. Linda said yes, let's do it. Okay, so there's those three. I'm going to set them aside. So what I'm going to do is pick three designs. That's all you have to do is pick three designs. So these are the three designs that I'm going to pick. The, these, and this has some gold foil in it. Okay, so we're going to cut this together and we're just going to do let's do four and a quarter. I'm going to do slightly bigger than four and a quarter. It's just going to give me a little wiggle room. And then we're going to the next cut is going to be at five and a half. 
and I'm just making sure those are lined up and then we're gonna do just like a sliver over five and a half okay and then I just need to punch this and I don't even really think it matters. We don't even have to get one of those guys in it. His face, you guys know, kind of creeps me out. So let's just not even get any. Uh, like, let's let's make it to where there's not really a, a focal point. Like, these had focal points. The deer, the penguin. This is just pattern, right? So... Okay, so then the last cut we're gonna make is this one. And I am going to, first I like to line it up this way or this way. Let's do a little bit. So I'm just moving my cardstock now. So you can do this by lining it up here, like this is three inches. Uh, like the three inch line. Mm, I'm totally overthinking it. Okay, just commit it. I just did it. Just do it. Just dive in and do it. Okay, so now our card base. Now let's use gold ribbon. Or maybe... Maybe I have some purple ribbon. So I want this here at the bottom because it's so, so beautiful. And then I want the yellow piece here. This is very like fall. I love it. Okay, now let's see if I have some purple ribbon. Purple is all the way at the back. Of course it is. Let me see, what's this? Oh, that's gray. That's not even purple. Oh, <laughs> purple's at the front. <laughs> I lied. Okay, so I have... Oh, I have this ribbon. Okay, this is um, Blackberry Bliss Satin Ribbon is what I believe this is. And I know for sure this is retired. But oh my lanta. Okay, let's do this. Oh, look how pretty this one is. Oh, that would be pretty. No, no, we got to go with the yellow. What about this? Oh, that's so gorgeous. Oh, I should have totally, I should have looked better at the papers. Oh, this would be pretty together. Okay, let's stay focused. Focus, focus, focus. This is gorgeous. Okay. So we'll press that down. Uh, I would have said I had to change to my computer. The phone didn't do your creations justice. <laughs> that happens sometimes, huh? This is going to fit perfect. See, we did it a little, just like slightly bigger than four and a quarter by five and a half. And that just gave us a little bit of wiggle room to make sure it covers the whole card base. So, and that'll just fit like a puzzle right in there because you cut it together. So everything's going to line up. And then there's that seam again. So we're going to cover that seam up. And normally, you guys, I just use uh my tape runner like which whatever it is whatever I'm using on the ribbon and it usually just works out fine but you can also use liquid glue too so we're just going to give that a minute to dry while we work on our sentiment and our other piece and I want the lid for my glue okay so now this is gonna how beautiful is this you guys and it's just it's just paper like I, I, I'm always, always amazed when I make something and I'm like, I can't believe that I made that. Okay, so let's do, let's 
Mm, I love this. Sheltering you with love at a time when words fall short. Ugh, I feel like that is the world we're living in right now. So that is going to be too big. I want something a little bit, thank you so much is cute, with heartfelt. You make a difference every day. That might work. That might be good. Um, that's a smaller one. And I feel like I want to use this again. So, and I am going to stamp this in Blackberry Bliss to match the ribbon. So I always say that Blackberry Bliss um, ink scares me because every time I use it, it's a nightmare. It like gets everywhere, no matter how careful I am. So we're going to tap, 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 tap um, in here. Okay, so the other thing I want to show you guys is I don't know if you can see in the light that the surface of my ink pad is a little bit weird. Especially as we've come through the heat. You can see like it kind of like the surface isn't as smooth. Two things I want to share with you guys about this. The first thing is... A, it's just an ink pad. I don't mind just replacing it. I kind of look at my ink pads as like, even though these last a long time, it's one of the things I love about Stampin' Up. And you can re-ink it. There is always going to be a moment when you're probably going to need to replace the ink pad itself. Let me just get a wipe out. Because here we go with the mess already. Um, so you can just replace it. I tend to just run my X-Acto knife over it as my office gets really hot and it was really brutal this year. This happens to my ink pads. Again, I'm not worried about it. If it's really, really bad, like if the ink pad is really covered in those little pieces, then I'll just replace it. But otherwise, I just clean it up and it ends up usually working out fine. Um, I just like to share those things when they come up. So I'm just, uh, I'm not, I'm not making out with this. Like we're not, you know, ooh, like we're not doing that. We're just like tap, 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 tap. And you're just getting the surface of that. And then when you stamp your image down again, you're just going to tap it. Even amount of pressure and pull up. And this way, and this ended up being crooked because I'm not right over it. So I am going to stamp where I'm directly over it. Um, so I can get it a little bit straighter. That was just from, look, and then I did it even worse, even right over me. Let me try one more time and maybe I can stop yakking my mouth. Let's see how that did. This one is slightly crooked. So I am going to go ahead and use this one. Um, see, and it smears so easy. You've got to be so careful. Okay, let's finish this up. So let's cut our ribbon. Using our ribbon scissors, we're going to get a really nice... straight edge okay and then if you don't like this hanging over again you can trim it I um, will probably trim it for sure and then let's add some my mom said crooked is good and I was gonna make a like a joke about politicians but I decided not to I reeled it in <laughs> It seems like a very easy, obvious joke, but I, I, I won't. I'll spare you guys. Okay. So now this is so beautiful. I love it. Okay. So it doesn't even matter which way it goes because there's no real image. We'll put that right in the middle. And then we'll cut another piece of foam I'm 
Now I hope that dried and I didn't. <laughs> Linda. <laughs> Is that like, yeah, you're funny. Just stop. Okay. Now let's get some gold sequence on here. Because I'm feeling like the gold sequence will totally work. Okay. Now I'm positive I have gold, but I'm not positive I have the right gold. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? <clears throat> we're really gonna go crazy. And we are going to get out Copper. Sorry, guys, I have to go to my shelf here. That's copper. Okay, so I have these two. So I have some Nuvo drops. I love my Nuvo drops. I haven't used them in a while. Let's take a look at what will look best. So that's the gold glitter, and then this is the pale gold. I don't know that the pale gold, the pale gold is my favorite. But I think that this is a much brighter gold. So I think we're going to go with the glitter. And this just works exactly like enamel dots. You just stick it on there. And I don't know, this might get really lost in all of this beautiful paper. But I just love it. I really think that's all I'm gonna do. You guys know me. Nope, it's not all I'm gonna do. I can't resist. I This is my favorite, you guys. This is so gorgeous. Linda said we are traveling, oh, to the Bay Area. We are near Reno now. The smoke is bad. Can't imagine how you're dealing. So if you're in Reno and you are headed to the Bay Area, you will be coming my way. And it gets less as you come this way, Linda. Um, it's actually not as bad here as it is in Reno because that's where the fire is. The direction of the fire is headed towards Tahoe and Reno and that area. It's not headed to down, like down towards us. So it'll get better as you keep going, but it is bad. So those are three cards with the exact, or four cards with the exact um, same card design. I definitely really love this one. No, there, are you talking about this one, mom? My mom said too much gold. It needs green or red. If you're talking about this, green or red would not go with this. I don't know, like, are you, do you have your glasses on? Because red or green would not go good with this. This is like purple and yellow. Uh, Linda said, oh, wow. And then Kathy said, I love Nuvo drops. I need to use them more. I do love my Nuvo drops and I definitely need to use them more. Um, they match Stampin' Up! product really well. So that's a really nice thing is that a lot of the colors will match, um, will match Stampin' Up! stuff really nicely. And that is the, the last one, one, uh, the last one, then silver. This one? No, mom, this is perfect. <laughs> Does everybody enjoy this argument I'm having with my mom? This card is perfect. It, I did the gold for you. Like you wanted gold. So I did a gold one. Oh my gosh. So funny. Okay. And then Kathy said, so pretty. The paper is growing on me. This one or this one? Because this one, I did, a, I did not like the paper at all. And out of all of them, it's like, this is probably my first favorite. Then the penguin. Then this fall one. Then this one, uh, Linda said beautiful cards. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see. I should put them down further. See, I keep wanting to go so far up because my setup is different. So I love them. So I will uh, do a post. I'm going to do a blog post. I don't know if you guys want a PDF. I can make a PDF for this. It was really simple, but I will hopefully have a blog post up today. And then this is going on YouTube today. So I hope everybody over on YouTube is doing well. And we are back at it this week. I hope everybody is um, 
No, I don't have my glasses on. It's not too much gold. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh, my mom's crazy. All right, guys, that is going to be it for me today. I will probably be live on Wednesday here again, and then I will be live on Friday on YouTube. I hope all of you guys are having a wonderful day, and I will chat with you guys later.